does it improve the lives of people? That's the true measure of any technology or any new investment. And you hope to God that basic core human element is never lost, no matter how technologically advanced we get as people. So the human case has always been strong for what direct relief does. People who are poor or stuck in these terrible circumstances need help. That basic idea to listen, not impose, to be respectful and not arrogant is still as valid as it was in 1948. The principles really don't change. And I think Direct Relief, fortunately, started with good ones of being open-minded, kind of big-hearted with respect to people's needs and, and hard-headed when it comes to other people's money. Uh, when you look back and think Direct Relief has played a significant role in many of the signature humanitarian events over the past 70 years, the combination of those characteristics has served the organization well, and they're sort of timeless. You're surrounded by inspiration if you see it. I think anytime, if you've never done something, or you've done something at one scale, it's scary to think how you can do it at 10 times the scale. But at the end of the, the basic decision was pretty easy. Why would we not do this when the signals were all pointing in the right direction? The dedication of the building is really a rededication to the cause, to the idea, and a commemoration to the people whose generosity made it possible. What it represents is a much greater capability to help more people. With tools that we have embedded in it, with the experience of 70 years, to bring those together in this building so we can do more in the same efficient way we've always tried to do it is really exciting. And we are sobered by the challenge, but deeply thankful for the opportunity to keep doing what uh, Direct Relief has been doing for the past 70 years.